Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a uh, very fancy image grid uh, for maybe like a gallery uh, for Android and iOS using Ionic Framework. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you two different things. I'm going to show you how to make use of image grids uh, using the Ionic Framework CSS and the responsive class as well as my own custom method which works a whole lot better uh, for what we're trying to do. But uh, let's, let's go through the steps. Uh, let's go ahead and start by creating a fresh Ionic Framework project on your desktop. All right, let's go ahead and enter that project. Let's go ahead and add the Android platform. Now, if you are using a Mac, you can also add the iOS platform, uh, but you have to be using a Mac. Uh, and I am using a Mac, uh, but for simplicity purposes, I am only going to be demonstrating this using Android because it meets uh, more people's needs. All right, with the Android platform installed, uh, let's go ahead and open up the project using our favorite text editor. In this case, I'm using Atom IO. All right, with the app uh, opened, let's go ahead and go to the www folder and then the JS folder, and we're going to open up app.js. And we're going to clean it up a bit uh, before we start touching it. Uh, and it'll remain constant uh, between both of our examples. It'll contain the same data. Now a lot of this I'm doing is just for uh, cosmetic purposes. It just helps me uh, to read it better. You don't have to do this. All right, so now we've got our basic uh, app.js file cleaned up. We're going to go ahead and add a controller. All right, so the purpose behind this controller is we're going to go ahead and create an image array that is accessible through our scope. And we're going to go ahead and populate that image array with 100 uh, dummy images that we're going to get from the internet. So let's go ahead and start with the following. We're going to say scope images equals empty array. Now let's go ahead and create a function called load images. So again, it's going to be very simple. We're going to loop uh, 100 times. And we're going to go ahead and get our dummy images from uh, the placeholder website because it's, uh, it's the most convenient, it's quick. So scope images push. We're going to push the ID of the image, which is I. And we're going to uh, add a source. And it's going to be HTTP placehold.it slash 50 by 50. Uh, and you can change the size to whatever you want. This is just an example, I'm trying to keep it simple. All right. So that is all we're going to add for the controller. It's, it's very simple. So now we're going to go ahead and navigate on into our index.html file. And again, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a bit because uh, the tabs are off. I don't know, it makes me crazy. Uh, so I'm just going to make it a little more readable real quick. Again, you can choose to do this or not do this. It's not going to make a difference as far as functionality. All right. So now that we've got something to work with, let's go ahead and add the controller to our ion content.
and we're going to go ahead and load all those images as soon as the controller is initialized. And now we can go ahead and do both of our examples. The first example I'm going to use is using the Ionic Grid as well as the Responsive class, and we're going to see what that looks like. So we're going to say div class equals row responsive md. And we're going to say div class column, column 25, ng repeat, image in images. Now because we're using images with AngularJS, we have to use the ng source tag instead of source because the ng source allows for curly brackets. Alright, so in theory here, what, what we're trying to accomplish is we're going to have a row, uh, and each, each column in that row is going to be 25%. And in theory, what, what we hope for is that we're going to have uh, a bunch of rows with four images per row. Uh, let's go ahead and see what that looks like. We can go ahead and open that in a web browser uh, before we test it in our simulator because we're only working with AngularJS and CSS. Otherwise, I would say don't bother with the web browser. All right, you can see there's only four images on the screen. Uh, they did not wrap. So remember, we have 100 images that we just loaded, but we're only seeing four. Uh, so when we go ahead and, and shrink it, it will, however, drop down when it reaches a certain size. And then there you go, you have 100 images uh, but not exactly what we're trying to accomplish. We wanted four images per row. So that brings us to phase two of this tutorial here. Let's go ahead and clear out uh, everything inside the ion content. We're going to start from scratch here. So we're going to say div uh, and then class equals row. We're going to add the ng repeat to the row. And then we're going to go ahead and add an if statement because we are going to only create a row when we're on every fourth image. So we're going to say index, which is going to be the index of our loop. And then we're going to use a modulus sign 4, and that's going to equal 0. And then we can go ahead and add our columns. So because we are expecting four images per row, we're going to go ahead and basically hard code that in anticipation. All right, so let me explain this uh, column that I created here. The reason why we have an ng if is because we want to make sure that the index is still less than the total amount of the array. And it, it doesn't really make sense as far as the first column, but you'll see what happens in the next uh, other three columns. So let's go ahead and say image ng source. We're going to say images. And it, notice that we're not using image, we're saying images. And then we're putting in the current index dot source. And we are saying width equals 100% again. Again, everything looks pretty familiar. Let's go ahead and copy the column. We're going to say uh, one, two, three. So that way we've got four rows. And in each of the other rows, we're going to be adding a digit to it. So in this one, it's going to be plus one, plus two. And you can see where it makes sense now that we're making sure that the index plus 2 is less than the image length because we don't want to get an undefined error. And then plus 3. All right, let's go ahead and save that and navigate back into our web browser here. We'll go ahead and expand it a little bit so we start from where we were last time. And we're going to refresh it. And you can see that we've got a grid of all of our 100 images. And as we shrink and expand, uh, the proportions stay the same. The aspect ratio stays the same, 
And overall, it looks, it looks pretty good. If you were going to extend upon this idea, you could probably have uh, the, each one of these images clickable to see a full screen image. And it's a lot more convenient than uh, what we saw with the uh, responsive kind of uh, row column system that is already implemented in Ionic. So let's go ahead and take what we see here. We're going to go ahead and build it for Android. And we're just going to make sure that everything works out inside of the simulator now. It always takes a long time to compile uh, the first time. It doesn't really matter how fast your computer is. All right, with it, with the compile, let's go ahead and install it. All right, and we have our simulator here. Let's go ahead and open it. And you can see that it matches what we saw in our web browser. And just to reiterate, we showed two examples. We showed an example with the responsive class for the uh, Ionic row and column system. And then we also made some homebrew logic uh, for a four column per row uh, kind of system.